And as you already know, the IMF, that's the banking cartel, International Monetary Fund, World Bank, these people want to take over every country and they want to tax you and that's where the ETS started from. But there's something I want to just bring, throw before you. Our country and most countries in the western part were founded on biblical law. When I say that, the Magna Carta is the basis of the Australian people. That's what founded the country. The Magna Carta and the biblical laws out of it is the foundation laws for America, the United States and this country. And a lot of you people might not be religious, but that doesn't matter. Every culture, every country has some form of religious base that makes their culture. Ours was based on the Ten Commandment Law. Now, you might poo-hoo that and say, well, I don't care because we don't uh, believe in God, we don't believe in the Bible. But let me say to you something. The Ten Commandment Law is often referred to as a law of freedom. Do you know why? Think about it. If everybody kept it, you wouldn't have to worry about locking a car. You wouldn't have to lock your home. You wouldn't have to worry about your little girl going down for a walk in the park and getting raped. Just think about it for a minute. That law held us together. And I'll tell you something. When I went to school, the Parliament always started, Parliament, that day, every day, with, guess what? The Lord's Prayer. And they would sing, God Save the Queen. When I went to school, in the school that I went to, what happened when we first, the bell would go at five to nine, we would all meet in the quadrangle, and guess what? We would sing, God Save the Queen. And the Lord's Prayer was the order of the day. What happened to that? Well, around the 70s, we had the United Nations people with their ideas come into our government and all of a sudden the Ten Commandment Law was taken off the walls that was hanging in the courts of law and all of a sudden we no longer seen God Save the Queen and all of a sudden people are getting the proper... The Westminster judicial system is based on the law of, the common law of the Bible I wonder what they will replace the Ten Commandment law if they threw it out. Have you got any ideas on that? Let's, let's just go for the um, basic, like worldwide, the four corners of the world. What are they, um, what's the issues? It's health, it's economy, it's the laws, and it's not serving the people. The people are upset, they are no longer are having difficulty putting food on the table, they're having difficulty paying their mortgages or bills or whatever whatever that consists of. So we need to really look at that. Not okay, we say, well, what's Australia got to do with uh, Europe or America or Africa or, or uh, many other worlds of the nation? But we've got to look at that there is a problem out there. You've got to look at that the New World Order is a... the <laughs> Now, you've got two other choices. But let's have look. a look at the, the laws, okay? So what we know about the laws through history or through our forefathers have, have revealed. So let's look at... Uh, uh, um. In comparison to the biblical law, the biblical law is um, uh, tempered with mercy and justice. Mercy and justice meaning that if you stole a loaf of bread, uh, I'm not going to cut your hand off. Eye for an eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand. Mm -hmm. um, in the biblical law, um, your, your, your arm wouldn't be cut off, you'd be go away and you were warned, uh, don't do it anymore. But you didn't lose your hand, you didn't, uh, you weren't treated so harshly. Yeah, but then again, looking at England and looking at a lot of people, that did occur many, many forefathers ago. Yes, it did. So yes, it has been modified. So not just that there's more, little more uh, Indians or Chinese or whatever it, the culture of that society is. Let's look at what is the culture and what is really law with taking the politics out, the fundamentals. They all are very common. Okay, so uh, in, if we were to uh, try and uh, make a conclusion as to what law Australia should be under, what law do you think it should be under? Well, it should be the, uh, the, the Bible. Biblical because law. It's biblical law, because let's look at Egyptology. Doesn't you belong to you? It, it's why it's called the law of freedom, and you wouldn't have to lock your car, wouldn't have Correct. to lock your house. And but so many forth. people don't um, know those laws, so we've okay, got to be... The, well, they took it, when they took it out of the schools, what we're talking about was taken away from the children. So they don't know what we're talking about. But it's I very mean, important. It's just simple things like respecting your elders, you That's know, right. having the courtesy when an elder yes. comes onto the bus. 
get no, pick up yeah. you know and move so these are the principles that is no longer taught it's no longer in our community it's no longer how many people sit up to the table and have a dinner together right so we've got a culture change happening in our country and every other country and obviously we've got to look at what will hold us together for millennia Correct, and, and um, also look, let's look at language, how much language changes in every, I mean I'm a person that speaks three languages and in each, from English to uh, Hungarian and Romanian in, there is a significant change in vocabulary, expression of every day that we might find, uh, every day that we find here in Australia, you know like you know, wicked was something wicked, evil. Now, wicked is something fantastic. Well, they make great. movies out of it now and glorified. Okay. Correct. So, so we've got to look at it because this is impacts every right. one of us. So we've been infiltrated in our culture, in our society, by a group of people that don't live in our country and they live in air conditioned offices overseas somewhere and using the United Nations, using the New World Health, uh, the New World Order using the World Health Organization, using the International Health Regulations, using the World Trade Agreement, you name it, these people have slowly infiltrated into every corner of our government. And when we elect somebody to go down to Canberra, elect somebody to go into our state government, we elect them thinking that they are going to do what we, the people, want. But that's not the case. So but we, we get... also people need to realise on mm -hmm. that statement that, you know, probably the parliamentarian or whoever right. the process so, is, they might have a discussion yeah. or a meeting and overnight things will happen which the people are do not, the people of the land don't know. No, and, and these politicians that we put into pay up, getting a couple of hundred thousand dollars a year, are actually then become puppets of the United Nations. Now, you would be very upset if you realise, for example, they use plebiscite. A plebiscite is not a referendum. If they wanted to use a referendum, that means going back to the people and asking the people what they want. Well, they know that they will lose if they go for a referendum to get a republic. We've got uh, one of the Senator Bob Brown now. He's put before Parliament a plebiscite to turn Australia into a republic. Why? Because they know, again, they will not be able to get a, a referendum through to make Australia a republic. So why do they want to make it a republic? Well, I'll tell you why. When we have a democratically elected government, the United Nations can't come in and take us over because we're subjected to our own constitution. They want us to throw out the constitution. They want us to become a republic and everything is to be corporized, so that makes it easy for a foreign power to come in and take us over. It's all happening right in front of your eyes. It's Sorry. happening. It's happening every day. And already we've got the governments, both federal and state, selling or wanting to sell off your, radio, your uh, tra uh, transmission, your uh, communications, sell off your water, sell off your shipping, sell off your transport. And, and, and all of that, there's not, all the, the equity of the country does not right. that belong uh, to the people. The worst, thing, the worst thing about this is, who's buying it? And if you look at who's buying it, KBR, Halliburton and the companies that are buying it, they came out of the Bush administration of USA. They are coming into our country, taking over our water, and then sell our water back to us at twice the amount of money. So, these are the things that, sure, you'll get angry about, but the only way you can stop it would be to ask our politicians to sever any relationship, sever any treaties with the UN, sever any agreements, world trade agreements. We've got people on our farms, getting chucked off our farms because they can't grow something and compete with it coming in from China, Indonesia or the Philippines coming in for a quarter of the price. How can our but, farmers compete? But I'll say that, we have to tell the people to be informed that the quality and the nutrition doesn't exist. That, that are coming in from overseas. We have now a little hope. I was contacted by a group of people that are starting what is called the Australian Sovereignty Party. I ask you to Google what I'm telling you. I ask you to look it up. I ask you to do your own research because if they are genuine, look it up. And if there is going to be any way, any hope that we can save this country, get back our constitution, get back our free and happy way of life, 
then we should look at these people and give them a chance to do it for it. What do you think? Yeah, also to look at that, you know, to come into a unification, to come into these other groups that are doing similar things. Let's look at and put it out, out to the world that, you know, what we can do. And yeah, and what's more is happening right now. Greece, Italy, Portugal, mm -hmm. a lot of countries now are going the same way as Argentina did. Hungary, they're bankrupt. Romania. You know, yeah, they're, they're all going bankrupt. being sold out. And, and are we going to be next? Are we going to let Australia go bankrupt? I urge you people to go and have a look in Google, go for the Australian Sovereignty Party. And also, Give them a chance. We, want, we want to, you know, feedback. Do we but also it's happening right now. I mean, they want more control over the people because what I'm telling you to do, I will be looked upon as an enemy of the state. Every time I mention the Constitution, I will be looked at as an enemy of the state. They don't want you to mention the Constitution. They are running scared and they are now going to take a picture of you if you've got a fine and, and take your fingerprints so that they've got control over you and you, you'll be an agitator.